In this video, we will learn how to analyze circuits using the no voltage method. The no voltage method directly gives us the values of unknown no voltages in the circuit. However, the solution obtained from the no voltage method can help us calculate currents through individual components and the power generated or dissipated by each component. The basic procedure in the no voltage method is to first, Identify the nodes of unknown voltages. Secondly, we will write the Kirchhoff's current law equation for each node. This will give us a system of linear equations. Note that for it to be solvable, you should expect that the number of equations must equal to the number of unknowns. Lastly, solve the system of linear equations obtained from step 2. Notice I said Kirchhoff's current law, even though we are solving for the no voltages. You may ask, if we use the Kirchhoff's current law, how will we solve for the no voltages then? So the important action to take in step 2 is to express currents in, the t in terms of no voltages by using I equals to delta V over R. And that's how no voltages come into the picture. But keep in mind that Ohm's law applies to resistive components only and not sources. Here are some important tips regarding the node voltage method. Grounds have a voltage of 0 volts. If the problem does not give the ground, you should put the ground at the place with many branch connections. When you encounter voltage sources not connected to the ground, write the KCL equation for the super node containing the voltage source. Another equation can be obtained by taking the difference of its two terminals. Sounds crazy, but this will make sense later. This topic is best understood with an example, so let's dive right in. So let's solve for the node voltages in this circuit. The first step is to identify the unknown nodes in the circuit. Recall that I've mentioned a node is an interconnection of two or more wires. So it's clear these two are nodes. At this corner, this is a node too, because it is an interconnection of two wires. This wire, and this wire. So the remaining nodes are trickier to identify. Although I said nodes are interconnections between two or more wires, I'd say this is a physical interpretation of what a node is. In reality, nodes are not necessarily just single points. Nodes can even be continuous segments of wires, but they must have the same voltage value. So how do we know what parts on a segment of wire have the same voltage value? The key idea is that voltage change occurs when the current passes through a device. For example, if I have a resistor connected to wires, there has to be some voltage drop across the resistor for the current to flow. So the nodes at each of the resistor's two ends have two different node values. However, if I just have a length of an ideal wire with no device, then there is no voltage drop, so the entire segment has the same voltage value. Going back to this problem, we ask again, what are the remaining nodes? Intuitively, you may say these two, but actually, this whole length is a node. Note that along this whole segment, we don't encounter any devices. So there is no voltage change. And hence, this entire length has the same voltage value. And thus, we capture this entire portion as a node. Even on this corner, we may extend this onto the entire segment as a node because again, if you go along this portion of the wire, you never encounter any devices, so there is no voltage change, hence it's all the same voltage value. Now let's try to see if we can tell any node voltages. The bottom node here is connected to ground, so it has a node voltage of 0 volts. Up here, we can actually tell that the node voltage is 10 volts. Remember that the voltage source fixes the voltage value on its two terminals. So if the bottom end is 0 
and we have a voltage gain of 10 volts, then the top node voltage is 10 volts. We can move on to the second step and that is to write the KCL equations at each of the unknown nodes. First, let's label the unknown node voltages like this. Let's start by writing the KCL at node A. Recall that KCL states all the currents going into the node is equal to all the currents going out of the node. The funny part is, we don't even know the directions of each of the branch currents. So what should we do? If you don't know what the direction of each branch current is, just assume they move out of the node. So what is the sum of currents going into node A? Since no current moves into node A, we just write 0. Now let's find the sum of currents leaving the node. If we use I equals to delta V over R, then we must use delta V equals to V start minus V end. So this current is given by VA minus 10 divided by 1 ohm. Plus, this current given by VA minus VB divided by 2 ohms. Plus, VA minus 0 divided by 5 ohms. We can simplify the equation by splitting the fractions, grouping the VA term and VB terms, moving the constant terms to one side, and there we have our first KCL equation. Moving on to node B, we again write the KCL equation. So the current entering the node is 3 amperes from the current source. Oh no, we don't know what the current direction is for these two branches. What do we do? We assume they move outwards. So the sum of currents leaving the node is VB minus VA divided by 2 ohms, VB minus 0 divided by 10 ohms. Again, simplifying this by splitting the fractions, grouping the VA terms and VB terms together, moving the constant terms to the other side, we have our second KCL equation. We move to the final step and that is to solve the system of equations. So there are many ways to do this. We can use simultaneous equations, otherwise we can use matrices, but from the start of the series, I've mentioned to get a calculator to help us solve a system of linear equations. When we do that, we should arrive at these answers. In the next video, we will solve a node voltage question that involves the use of supernodes.